I saw him and I was like, oh, it's a little weird, you know, at first. But then I was like, oh, this guy's got, he's really cool, you know, just like <laughs> spreading happiness and everybody. It's really cool. <laughs> I actually know how to swing dance, so this is really cool. Michael Joseph Ambrosius. My age is 44. I was born in Lawton, Oklahoma. Grew up in New Mexico for 10 years, and I've been living in Oregon since 91. They call me Dancing Mike because I've danced from around campus in town for five years. I've been a part of Muck Rock, and I've been part of Sing, and I've went to a couple of concerts. I've danced in bars. I've even did festivals. Life is a stage. The whole idea of life is you don't need a stage to dance. Everywhere is a stage in life. You can dance anywhere. The problem with nowadays is if you annoy people, you gotta go. I've been attacked by dancing. I've had people be so insecure that they will attack me. Well, I had a, a heavy set gentleman put his hands together like this and say, show me something, and hit me in the throat. He hit me in the throat twice. My occupation, I really don't have one because I was physically abused at a very young age. So I had four seizures, so I'm on SSI. It's supplemental social security income for people who have disabilities. There's points where you have mental disabilities also. The whole idea of disabilities program is that you can't work. You're not physically or mentally able to work. And this is where I've been living, and yeah, you know, so I tell people, <laughs> they go, ah! <laughs> no, you don't live anywhere! <laughs> There's a one bed bedroom, one bathroom. Kind of my bathroom's mess, but it's a nice little bathroom. <laughs> I wish the tub was a little bit bigger. <laughs> But it's, <laughs> it's a short little dinky tub, but no, it's nice. MTV Cribs, Dancing Mike Edition. <laughs> Go dancing to my hallway. Um, this is my sloppy kitchen. Recycling. I haven't recycled yet, but um, hallway for a kitchen. And of course, refrigerator. <laughs> I'm kind of poor, what can I say? <laughs> Man, you have a lot of bread. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. Since I'm used to being a parent, I always give my kid a bedroom. So I just put my bed right in my living room. <laughs> nice. so I'm living in my living room playing video games and, and uh, TV and shit. Oh, word. Yeah. 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 Play video games? Yeah, Xbox and all that. And yeah. They even have a swimming pool here. No, but uh, I moved around. I used to live on Circle before this. Typical day is I wake up whenever I want to, and I go wherever I want. I've gone to soup kitchens because, of course, I'm not exactly rich. There's no actually set routine. I usually go to Roshi Library and play on the computer, but it's usually just three hours of the guest pass, and I do my three hours and go. Anything from role-playing games to Star Trek games. On Facebook, they have this neat little thing that says, well, what's on your mind? Or I've looked into different people chatting and talking about different things. I had a really, really strict adopted dad. And he was ex-military. We didn't exactly uh, get along. There was some sexual abuse and physical abuse and I decided to leave. And with my sister who lived in Monroe. And then my friends helped me get an apartment here. So I got to be able to live on my own. It's liberating to finally get out on your own and do your own thing. To be your own person and not have to be told when to come home, what to do, how to do it, get your haircut. Got married, had a divorce, had a kid, and now he's 18. Jennifer and I met in Monroe. Like typical couples, we thought we had something, but we were diametrically opposed. And so we got a mutual divorce after uh, we had a kid. I was trying to mentally take care of a kid while dealing with divorce, so I had a little bit of depression. And I had stubborn friends that were like, Mike, 
snap out of this. When you uh, have a kid, is you have no time for depression. You have no time because you have to that pretty kid get your kid up. When my son was 13 and my ex actually decided to see my kid, I actually started getting bored. He moved with his mom, which means I had nothing but time. So I wanted something to do. When I started dancing in town, it's because I had no money. And you can't just go to a bar without money. I was around my friend who was playing Xbox and I just got bored of it. So I went and found myself at an impulse. One bouncer called a cop. I wasn't selling any drugs, buying any alcohol, giving alcohol to anybody, and I wasn't stripping. I was just dancing on the balcony. So the cop couldn't arrest me. I wasn't doing anything wrong. So I came back next week. And then I started dancing just on the sidewalk. And then all of a sudden, I remembered all the things I used to do as a kid. Where I grew up in New Mexico was a lot of salsa. Everyone moved with their hips. It was basically a Native American Spanish culture. In New Mexico, they do a lot of dancing. My grandmother was the first person to teach me to dance. She taught me a heel-toe routine, but she didn't tell me what it was. I was born in 71. So I went through the disco age, I went through the rock and roll age, the rap age, the hip hop age. Dancing is really simple, actually. It's think, do. Think of something and then find ways to do it. There was no limits in the 80s, we just did. If you could spin on your head, fine. If you could do a worm, we didn't even care what we looked like. We were just like, hey, this is fun. Or you can even go with your shoulders, one, two, three. And this is before pop and lock because you had the shimmy. And you're going, I've heard I'm crazy, I've heard I'm gay, I've heard I'm homeless. I literally had in a bar one time, this lady asked me where she could get pot. I told her I don't know. It shows you're lying. You can look in my apartment and there's only several things you're gonna find. One, you'll find an Advil, because I do get pain in my legs. Occasionally I'm getting older. And you'll find potassium and fish oil pill. That's it. I don't do drugs. I've smoked one cigarette once in my life and I didn't like the way it felt. And I stomped it out. I used to drink. I was 24 when I did a New Year's party. My eyes literally popped and rolled inside my head turned white. So I decided after that I was going to stop drinking. So I haven't drank alcohol for 24 years. So as I can tell you, I don't do drugs, but if you don't believe it, that's not on me, that's on you. <laughs> I got better things to do with life and money than to worry about how I appear. I don't look spiffy. One, I don't have the money to look spiffy, nor do I care to. I don't care what they think, because I know what I am and I know what I'm not. If I stop to worry about what everyone thinks, I won't be me anymore. Awesome. Yeah, Mikey. Dude, you make my day every time I see you, Don. Literally every day. <laughs> I was coming home from the bar, actually, and they were like, Hey, Mike, we got this thing called mock rock going on. Would you like to dance? I was like, sure. No, whatever. And so they had two tickets and $50. Not that I needed to be paid. I would have done it for free. Everyone's like, oh, Mike, aren't you going to be nervous? I go, dude, I dance on the street. I had a sweat in my hand. I cartwheeled. I spun the coat, dropped it into a split. But what I didn't expect when I first did my rock was everyone wrong. And part of me is thinking, wait, y'all are that bored? <laughs> that was all improv. That was just me doing me. <laughs> they put a lot of shame and guilt nowadays to things that have no shame or guilt to them. It doesn't matter whether you're good or bad at dancing. What happens is too many people, they worry about what they look like. They worry about what other people think. They worry about what other people feel versus just being. Because of this, and I've seen lots of times where I've told people, I ask them, would you like to swing dance? They say, no, I can't. But when they get rid of the worry of what they're doing or how they look or whether they're doing something right or wrong, they dance beautifully. Life is going to throw adversity at you. If you can accept yourself who you are and all the adversity, and the fact that you're singing and dancing means that you're not afraid to be yourself in public. You can't run from the things that happen in life. My first abuse was one at one and a half two. What my real parents did was so severe, I had a seizure to wipe it out. Sometimes you have to deal with the memory. 
whether you like it or not. But the question is, how does that memory and that pain define you? There's a neat thing about dancing. There comes a time when you're not in the past, you're not in the present, and you're not in the future. You're just in the moment. You're not worried about the preconceived notions. You're just focused on the dance. You're focused on the song. You're not reliving anything. You're just there. It's not really a escape. It's actually dealing. And go back in the past and change it. But that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy life. It just means you deal with it at the time you need to deal with it. There's so much negativity around the world that if it's not changed, people will keep on doing cruelty. People need hope. I like to inspire people to enjoy life. If I can make a positive impact before I leave this world, it's better to be kind than to be cruel. And a lot of people, they look at everything in the news and they all they see is negative. They never see anything positive. So they get this idea that the world is only negative. It's not. It's not positive or negative, it just is. But the world can be whatever you make of it. So you think there's, there's eventually going to be a day when you say, that's it, can't dance anymore? I think I'm just going to change the way I dance. It's not going to be, I'm not going to do the whole fancy pop and lock. It's more going to be swing. Yeah. yeah, I'll do a little pop and lock, but it's not going to be split. Do you feel pressure like from the community, the Corrales community, to be an uphold <laughs> dancing mic? I mean, there is sometimes, yes. I don't know if I'm in control of the dance, or the dance doesn't control me and I'm just a dancing little monkey going, <laughs> hello, monkey with banana. So I'm going to dance at my own pace. I, when I feel like it, I'm going to dance. When I don't feel like it, I'm going to walk.